Hey, hey, what is going on? What is going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so if you're catching this on the replay, make sure you hashtag replay so that I know that you were here. And if you are catching this on the replay, you can skip ahead to about the minute and a half to two minute mark to get to the content. When you hop on, let me know who you are and where you're from so I can shout you out and say hello. And while my live viewers are jumping on, I'm gonna be sharing this out to a few of my favorite spots and I encourage you to do the same. I'm getting increasing my skill level here um, dealing with this new phone, y'all. <laughs> Did I tell you I had to get my tech dude son to help me do some stuff? Like, oh my gosh, I have turned into the old lady. <laughs> I have turned into the old lady that gets the young people to do stuff. All right, let me get this shared out and then we'll get this show on the road. All right, uh, da, 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 da. okay, but I'm telling you, this thing is moving a lot faster though. So that is making me very happy. So I did wait. Um, <laughs> so I did wait long enough so that um, the, the other phone was dead, right? Because I, I don't know if I told y'all, but when I went to go get the phone and they were doing the data transfer, the lady was scrolling and the phone just froze. She said, oh, yes, ma'am. It was time for you to get a new phone. <laughs> like, yes, I know. <laughs> All right, you guys. Let me quit acting a fool. It's a fantastic day. Okay, let's get started with the housekeeping announcements. All right, February 28th is just a few days away. And for people who live in areas impacted by Hurricane Michael have until February 28th to file their 2017 taxes if they had a valid extension already filed. March 15th is the deadline for S Corps and partnerships to file their taxes or file an extension. So, um, if you miss that deadline, the failure to file penalty is $195 a month for S-Corps and $200 per month for partnerships. And then April 15th is the day. All right. That is tax day where you must file your taxes or file an extension. If you have a tax liability, April 15th is the deadline to pay that tax liability. And so even if you can't pay your tax liability, guys, you still need to file your taxes. I've heard a lot of people saying, okay, well, I'm not going to file because I owe and I can't pay the bill. You have definitely got to file your taxes, whether you do it now or later, but you must file all of your taxes in order for the IRS to even work with you on a tax bill, okay? Okay. And if you have estimated tax payments, uh, 415, April 15th is the deadline for your Q1 estimated tax payments. This is why I encourage you to not wait until the last minute. So in case you got some extra checks you need to write, you got a little bit of time to prepare for that. All right. So that is it for the housekeeping announcements. Let me get our intro out the way. Welcome to everybody that just um, jumped on. Let me get our intro out of the way and then we will get down with the content for today. Welcome to Home Biz Tax Talk. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the Home Biz Tax Lady, where I help home business owners win the tax game. Home Biz Tax Talk airs Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock-ish. And when you tune into my show, you're going to hear about topics that are important to the home business community. Okay, you guys. So at the end of January, I shared a video and, you know, really talked about why tax refunds are so low this year, okay? And really, people are... You know, with this new tax, uh, with the new tax code, tax reform is kicked in. This is our first filing. You know, people just hadn't been liking those numbers, right? And so I actually looked on my YouTube channel and over 2,600 people have looked at this video, have been watching this video. Now, that is bananas, right? That is, that is really, it's really telling though. It's telling like, okay, you know, people really want answers to what is going on. And really, it's a lot of things. But, um, but the follow up to that is I really wanted to talk about what you can be doing with your tax refund. And the reason that I want to have this conversation is because we have to get to where we are moving away from a dependence on tax refunds, okay? We have got to get there. Um, 
because we have, you know, there are two ways you're going to get a refund. Okay. One is by overpaying your taxes. And what I mean is, is that you have um, withheld too much in your paycheck, or if you have estimated tax payments, you have overpaid your taxes, meaning perhaps you did not make as much money as you had expected. And so based on that, you overpaid your, uh, your taxes and you're getting a tax refund. So that's that side of it. And then there are the people who, um, who depend on tax credits, the earned income tax credit, the, the child tax credit, additional child tax credit, those types of, you know, you know, refunds. Okay. But I want to, I want to share with you though, when you're looking at the earned income tax credit, like understand where this comes from. The earned income tax credit, when it was created, was called the poverty tax credit. This was meant, this tax credit, it was meant to be temporary. And it was in the 70s sometime. Don't quote me on exactly the year, but it was sometime in the 70s that this uh, tax credit was created for lower income people to be able to get a tax, you know, basically get tax money back to keep them above the poverty line. That was the original intent of the earned income tax credit. And somewhere along the way, folks thought it was a good idea and it was, and it remained permanent. But understand that you know, there are people who are low income earners, but there are also business owners who qualify for earned income credit. So it's not just poor people. There are also business owners that, hey, there you qualify for the earned income tax credit. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into the math of that. But the fact is, that it happened, but that was the original intent of the earned income tax credit. It was for, you know, for poor people to remain above the poverty line. That was the intent. So, um, and so now, but, but we're in an age where there is a sense of entitlement. There, there is a sense of entitlement that I should get a tax refund. That if Sue got a tax refund, I should get a tax refund. If Joe got one, I should get one. And that it is not an entitlement. It is, just know, right? You either qualify for one or you don't, all right? You either overpaid or you didn't. So I, so I really need people to, to get away from that entitlement. So, um, but also let's move in the direction where we are not depending on a tax refund. Because if we're talking about growing wealth, see, everybody's like, oh, we must get this generational wealth. We must grow our wealth and all of this stuff. Wealthy people don't get tax refunds, okay? Unless something goes horribly, horribly wrong. Or they overpay, right? Those are the two ways that people get tax refunds. As a matter of fact, I want to say it was last year sometime, I um, I heard Grant Cardone give his annual tax whatever, and he's talking about, oh, the IRS gives me money back every year. Like, yeah, because you've overpaid during the year. So it's not like, you know, he's, getting some windfall. It's just he's overpaid during the year. And so this is why I want to say we have to, we have to move away from that. If you're talking, you can't be, um, you're not going to be wealthy, make a lot of money and get a tax refund. Doesn't work that way unless you overpay, right? So that's why I want to have this conversation today to how do we start to move away from the tax refund and really get to where we're talking about building wealth. Because see, when you build wealth, then you can do other things with money that you might not get a tax refund, but you might not be paying all these taxes either. You're going to pay. OK, let's let's be clear. You will pay taxes, but it's at the rate at which you pay the taxes. That makes a difference. All right. So number one, what to do with a tax refund? Save it. Mm -hmm. Yes, save it. Here's why. There is a study that um, was done. I want to say, gosh, maybe 2016, 2017, one of those years. But 60 percent of people do not have. 500 or or even a thousand dollars saved up in case of an emergency so if you do you know how easy it is to get a 500 hundred dollar emergency car dies you need new tires your kid falls and busts their mouth open on the ground you know on the playground falling off swings break an arm or something do you know how easy it is to get a 500 hundred dollar or a thousand dollar emergency yet 60 percent of people don't have that kind of money saved up so save up this tax refund if you got 500 dollars back save it up if you got three thousand dollars back 
save it up, save some money for a rainy day because it's not if it's going to happen, it's a matter of when. Okay. So that's number one, save it. Number two, pay off high interest debt. Okay. Now I see, I saw a post that was, um, that was flying around. It was talking about how, um, you know, how the country's in debt, but yet they're investing in stuff. And I was like, okay, listen, <laughs> let's, let's talk about this, right? Okay. So if the amount that you invest will not yield more than what your interest costs, you need to pay off high interest debt so that you can, and not repeat the debt. Okay. Um, the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities did a study in 2016. And it talked about how most people who get large tax refunds, they use that money to pay off. One of the, one of the re reasons they spend the money is for high interest debt. So that can be, um, credit cards. It can be store credit cards, but we're also talking about payday loans as well. These are high interest loans that you need to pay off and not get into debt. One of the other cycles that we tend to get into is we run up all this money during Q4, right? Q4 in the U.S. is the money spending is time of the year. You got everything from back to school, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, you know, all of these, these holidays, right? And people rack up a lot of debt counting on tax refunds to be able to pay it off. And I'm going to encourage you to not do that this year. Do not fall into that trap this year, right? Because you're then you're going to stay in that cycle. So pay off the high interest debt and then discipline yourself to not go into debt again. Because if you save up money throughout the year, then you have cash available to pay for what you need instead of running up bills to buy buy things that you don't have money for. Okay. That's a discipline thing. So that's number two. Number three, invest in a skill. Now, one of the reasons that, um, you know, that we have the poverty credit, you guys, is because we ain't making any money. Now we got people that have jobs that don't make money. These are low skill jobs. If you want to make more money, you got to increase your skill set. So use some of that money to invest in a skill. Right now, trades are suffering. Okay. Trades, like there's nothing wrong with the trade. Like I need people to get that. There's nothing wrong with you, um, learning to be a plumber, learn to be an electrician, you know, hairstylist, barbering, whatever. Increase your skill set and invest some of that money to take a class, to take a computer class, to learn how to program. There's all sorts of things that are available to you, but it might require an investment. So now take this tax refund and invest in a skill that you can monetize and bring more money into your household. Okay. Increase your skill set. All right. That was number three. Number four, fix the credit. <laughs> okay. So listen, I know we got everybody that do such and such and such and credit repair. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm really, you know, if you don't know how to fix your credit on your own, find a reputable person that can help you fix your credit. Because yes, cash, we love to pay for things for cash, but we also need credit at times. Okay, let's be honest. But poor people pay more. Poor people pay more. You pay higher interest rates with, with poor credit. You get high interest, um, you get high interest loans. You pay more. That's the way it is. So people, you know, like when they, when you see those commercials, like especially the car commercials, they're talking about, you know, zero, zero percent interest for well qualified customers. Do you know how high that bar is set? You ain't walking out of a car dealership with zero percent interest unless you paying uh, cash for that vehicle. Okay. <laughs> but seriously, paying, you know, it fixing your and repairing your credit. You might need some help with that. Okay. Find a reputable person to do that. 
find, invest in that because that will then help you save money over time when it's time for you to buy things that you need credit to do, like a house, or you might need to buy a car, okay? Fix your credit. And the last thing is, and not necessarily in any different order, but consult a financial advisor. Yeah, financial advisors actually do work. Because see, what they can then help you do is learn how to invest your money. What in, I don't care if you're only investing $50 or $25 a month, it's better than nothing. But consulting with the financial advisor, someone whose job it is to know, you know, about in investments and stocks and bonds and or real estate or whatever, talk to somebody. Talk to somebody whose job it is to grow money, to help you grow your money. And the money that you grow right now, it may not seem like much, but it, you might be growing money for your kids. And so compound interest is sexy, but you got to earn interest first, right? Who was it that said compound interest, those that um, get it, get it, those that don't get it, pay it, Right? Compound interest is not cute unless you are earning compound interest, okay? So this is why you need to go and get, you know, go and consult with people whose job it is to know how to grow money. That's what they're supposed to do. So don't just sit here and take this refund and go and squander it. There are so many videos that are going around right now that show the tax season boss out and then two weeks later, you're broke. Don't do that. Make a conscious decision to take that money and put it to where you're going to get a return on your investment. You are not going to get a return on your investment buying stuff that you really can't pay for any other time of the year. Okay, like seriously. So those are some things that you can do that's going to put you in a better position next year. Right. I was reading this article and it said a key thing that I thought was so great. Wealthy people think about taxes all throughout the year. Everybody else only think about taxes at tax time. At tax time, it's too late. You need to be looking at what's happening in your life right now so that when you get to filing taxes next year, there's no surprises. And and also, you are not going to be sitting there like, I, you know, I had, I've had people who have actually booked a, you know, I offer a 15 minute complimentary consult, right? Great. I've had people who are not my clients booking calls with me to find out when they're going to get their tax refund. Do not be in that position next year to where you're like, oh my God, when am I going to get this money? When am I going to get this money? We have got to get away from there. That type of desperation is just no. So make a conscious decision to put yourself in a better position next year by doing all the work throughout the year. Saving money. Saving money is sexy. Okay. I don't know about y'all, but I kind of like that if, you know, when I got to take my car to the shop, how much is it? Okay, great. And I go on about my business instead of finding out how much it is and like, oh my God, how am I going to pay for this? No. And then, you know, the, the other thing that I find funny and, you know, I'm going to talk about this mentality and then I'm going to get off here because I could talk about this forever, right? Then the mentality is we want to be angry at wealthy people. We, we, you can't, we think that wealthy people can't relate. It just might be that wealthy people made a different decision, right? Like I can show you. Like, I'm not wealthy, but I ain't broke. But I could also show you where I had $3 in my bank account. And the only thing that saved me, the only thing that saved me is that I got, um, what do you call those things for when you, your escrow? I got an escrow refund of $150. That's the only thing that saved me. I had $3.89 in my account and it was not time for me to get paid yet from my job. Oh, and I keep that in my wallet as a reminder of where I came from. So don't think that because people grow in their wealth that they can't relate. They just made some different decisions. 
So that's what you have to do. You have to make different decisions about what you're going to do with your money, about what you're going to do with your time, about what you're going to do with everything. Like, you know, hey, I I, I went and joined Team iPhone, y'all, okay? And the lady was so nice. She said, oh, well, we can finance this for you. Like, no, 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 ma'am. We're not financing anything. We're going to pay for this and keep it moving. And she looked at me like I had two heads. I'm like, I'm not financing anything. No, <laughs> that's, just, that's just not how we get down. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, so that's what I'm saying, you guys, is that we have to make conscious decisions about, about doing things differently with our money. And if you make these decisions now throughout the year, then come 2019, you might not be in a bad position and you can probably shop around to find someone who can actually prepare your taxes. See, like you're going to be, you know, to, um, you know, to these different types of get your money now, these refund advanced loan places. Do you understand the premium pricing that you are paying for this stuff? When I see people paying $800 for an earned income tax credit uh, tax return, you know why? Because you're so desperate that you need this money now that you're paying a premium price. When you, If you put yourself in a position that you can wait, then you can save that money. You can find someone who is reputable, who is working for you, and that's going to help you grow your wealth. That's a whole different place to be in. So hope that gives you food for thought. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to Home Biz Tax Talk. Again, we air Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock-ish. And you can come here to get your questions answered about your home biz business taxes. And if you have not scheduled your consult, you can do so right here at www.homebiztaxchat.com. All right. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.